From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Now we've been reporting on the bridge and train derailment all summer. And with recent news of contaminated fish, we're going to reflect on the work that has been done and what the future outlook is for the river and for its inhabitants. We're here with Smiles Across Montana, a nonprofit mobile dentistry unit. I'm Heaven Van, and I'll show you how they've been serving local Montana communities. Butte Silverbow plans to make crosswalks like this a little fancier and easier to see. I'm Alina Howder. This great big pumpkin could be the largest ever grown here in the state of Montana. We'll tell you more coming up. That's a big piece of squash, Chet. That is a big piece of squash. <laughs> that is huge. Yeah. 6.30 on this Friday edition of Montana This Morning. Jane McDonald and Chet Lehman with you. It's a great Friday. We have Crosstown tonight here mm -hmm. in Bozeman. One, it's Friday, so that means weekend full of college football. Absolutely. We mm -hmm. have uh, the Montana Tech Ore Diggers, Montana Western Bulldogs, yep. both at home. Cats and Grizz are on the road mm -hmm. uh, playing a Big Sky Conference opening game yeah. action. You can catch those Big Sky Conference games on our broadcast uh, coming up a Saturday afternoon as well. Absolutely so, right. Lots happening. Uh, right now, lots happening in weather, just not here. Yeah. That will be happening. You can see on satellite and radar, uh, eastern and central part of the state getting the rain showers. It'll spin around and we'll get some more of that as we work our way through the day. Right now, temperature Temperatures in the 40s, uh, not too bad out there. It is damp in places. There are some foggy areas as well, so be careful if you're doing some driving around. Uh, give yourself a little extra time. We'll have more on that, and we'll also take a look at the uh, first day of fall forecast. Uh, you're going to like it a lot better than the last day of summer <laughs> forecast. Trust me that. I'll have that for you coming up. All right, looking forward to it, Chet. Thank you very much. Now, right off the top, people are getting more time to comment on proposed bison management changes at Yellowstone National Park. Now, comments may now be submitted until October 10th. Now, the previous deadline was this Monday, September 25th. The Park Service says conditions have changed since the current bison management plan that was devised 23 years ago. Managers say there is new information about how bison live and migrate in and out of the park and react to the changing weather conditions. Last winter saw significant snowfall in the northern part of the park and large numbers of bison migrated out of the park in search for food. That led to a harvest of more than 1,000 bison by tribal hunters and 75 animals by state hunters. There are three proposals for managing bison in the future. The first is to change nothing. That calls for a population of 3,500 to 5,000 bison after calving each year. The second proposal bumps up the bison population goal to a maximum of 6,000 animals and relies on tribal hunting and transfer of disease-free animals to tribal lands. The third proposal increases the maximum bison population to 7,000 animals. Natural selection and bison dispersal to other parts of the park and public lands plus the relocation program would be used to control the population. Now you can find a link to the public comment page over on our websites. And on to our top story for this half hour. We reported earlier this week that people are now being advised not to eat any fish, no matter the species, caught in the Yellowstone River from Reed Point all the way to Laurel. Now, it follows this summer's train derailment in Stillwater County. And this morning, MTN's Phil Van Pelt is digging into how long this impact could last. If you catch a fish in the Yellowstone River from the Indian Ford Fishing Access near Reed Point all the way to the Highway 212 bridge in Laurel, don't eat it. Fish, Wildlife and Parks says that all fish caught along that stretch of river may not be safe for consumption. The question is, though, for how long? Anytime you hear something like, you know, there could be a problem with the fish and don't eat them, then, you know, there could be a problem. Visit the site of June's bridge collapse and train derailment, and everything looks like it's back to normal. But what you can't see are the problems beneath the water surface. Our concern is over the fishery, the quality of the fishery. Fish, Wildlife, and Parks this week advised people not to eat any fish caught on a more than 40-mile stretch of the river. This after various hydrocarbons were detected in several species of fish. It doesn't surprise us to start with. Uh, I mean, that was... When they had that spill, uh, everybody's kind of wondering what it is. It's that crazy, pretty crazy stuff when you've got asphalt 
you know, floating to the bottom. As of right now, we don't know where those PAHs are coming from. There's a range of different materials that exist both naturally and that are more man-made um, that have PAHs in them. Chrissy Webb is with Fish, Wildlife and Parks. At this point, she says it's unclear when the advisory will be lifted. But environmentalists say if the hydrocarbons detected are from the spill, it could be years. Aromatic hydrocarbons remain in water for a long, long period of time, sometimes decades. Scott Bossy is with American Rivers and has a lot of experience working with oil spill cleanups. He agrees hydrocarbons do naturally occur in rock formations along the river, but believes the derailment is the most likely culprit. Logically, one would think that these fish would show signs of those contaminants um, due to the train derailment and spill. Fish, Wildlife and Parks will continue to test fish, but the state acknowledges it could be some time before fish in the Yellowstone are safe to eat, a derailment with potentially lasting impacts for years to come. We would plan to lift it when we you know, get a sample that shows these, uh, these PAHs are at a level that are safe for humans to consume again. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Thank you very much, Phil. Now, if you were in the Bozeman area, you might have spotted a new RV parked in town. Well, it's a nonprofit on wheels. MTN's Heaven Van tells us how Smiles Across Montana is providing innovative service to those without access to dental care. Smiles Across Montana is a nonprofit helping underserved communities and providing MSU students with valuable hands on experience. Recently, they've expanded their care with a mobile dentistry unit. Your oral health directly affects your overall health. Crystal Spring has been promoting dental health for years. From diseases like diabetes to Alzheimer's to preterm, you know, births of babies, these things are all really, really important. If your mouth isn't healthy, the rest of you isn't healthy. This will be fun. She says this mobile unit makes accessing dental care much easier for patients. There's just not enough room in the facility to house us also, and we're able to just to pull up right in front and serve people. MSU nursing students are also on board, learning new techniques, including using interoral cameras on their patients. They're not just looking in their mouth to the back of their throat, they're able to take a look with the camera. If they find something, they can actually take a picture of it and send it to a dental professional. Smiles Across Montana is trying to broaden the scope of dental work, integrating it with primary care professionals. I want dental professionals to look at themselves as part of the healthcare team because that essentially is what we are. Spring also says the team is able to help those underserved and without insurance through the help of grants. There are a lot of people who are going without services because they don't have insurance or can't afford it. And Smiles is using different approaches to dentistry, including silver diamine fluoride, a less invasive way of healing cavities. We want to do whatever we can to keep kids from having to be sedated for dentistry. So prevention, prevention, prevention. Spring hopes that Smiles Across Montana will be able to further expand their services to help those in the community going without dental care. It's just listening to people and playing fair. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, wanting more for communities and your patients than yourself. In Bozeman, Heaven Van, MTN News. Heaven, thank you very much for that report. Now, switching gears over to the mining city, making crosswalks stand out. MTN's John Amy tells us about a project that's supposed to enhance a street in Uptown Butte. Butte Silver Bow is green lighting a project in which they're going to stylize crosswalks like this along this portion of West Park Street so that they're more visual and easily used by pedestrians. We're really excited about it. It's really going to be kind of an eye catching, very nice feel, I think, for our community. The city received a $120,000 grant to put down thermoplastic pavement markings on nine crosswalks along Park Street between Montana and Main Streets. And it also can um, just really enhance the experience of the pedestrian as well, you know, in wayfinding, you know, being able to find their way, um, knowing where to cross, where it's safe to cross. The pavement markings are designed to stand out, which should make the crosswalks at these intersections safer. 
because it does, you know, enhance them, calls them out. You are at an intersection. There could be pedestrians in this crosswalk. For Julia Dawson, who sometimes has difficulty getting around, a safe crosswalk is a good thing. Very important. Sometimes the drivers are a little wacky, <laughs> you know, you don't want to get hit. She also likes the idea that the designs will be attractive. Butte's already pretty. Let's make it prettier. Why not? <laughs> Streetscape Solutions out of Utah was awarded the contract to do the crosswalks. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Thank you very much, good John. Now, switching gears a little bit to some agriculture news. Actually, some pretty big agriculture news. MTN's Alina Howder introduces us to a farmer who is looking to make a statement with his squash. You won't have to go far to find the great big pumpkin as it's right here in Lockwood. The man who grew this gorgeous gourd believes it might be the largest ever grown in the state of Montana. Get on my back. Whether it's playing with his pup there Jiffy. There you go. Okay, jump off. Or going out for a hunt. Right now it's birds, but I'll be elk hunting soon. 30-year-old Joe Nigro has a lot of passions in life. I think positivity will feed this pumpkin. But none are as unique as his love for growing giant gourds. I've just been intrigued with it my whole life, so how could you not be? It's been three years since the insurance salesman brought his pumpkin passion to life. My first one was 900 pounds and it cracked, so we brought it to the dump and weighed it. Last year it was 554 and it got fifth place in Wyoming in a Wyoming way off, so then this is year three. Instead of smashing pumpkins, he's trying to smash a record. July 5th is when this flower was pollinated and it was just this big. So this is like a 70, 77 day old pumpkin. This year three pumpkin is estimated to be over 1300 pounds. It's over the state record. It just needs to stay true to measurements is all. And we got to make sure no one else grows a bigger pumpkin this year. Since 1258 pounds is the current pumpkin record for Montana. And then you just bring it down. He's got a pretty gourd shot with his Atlantic giant pumpkin. It came from a pumpkin that was 2058 pounds uh, grown in Connecticut. So it's definitely, it knows how to be big. It's just got to get there. The giant gourd stands on top of 750 square feet of root system. And it'll be a feat to take to Rapid City, South Dakota for the great downtown pumpkin festival. You kind of form a basket with straps and ropes. And then the guys at Case Construction, they're going to bring a tractor over. And then you're going to hopefully just pick it up and plop it in a truck or, or a trailer. And after Nigro hopefully brings back the state record, the gourd will be put to good use. It's going to go to the Laurel Pumpkin Patch. I talked to those guys and they thought it would be cool for everybody to kind of see it and gawk at it. In Lockwood, Alina Howder, MTN News. Thank you very much, Alina. Now it's official. Montana State University's fall student enrollment is the largest in its 130 year history. According to MSU officials, 16,978 Bobcats are pursuing higher education at the state's largest university. That's 2% more than last fall's headcount, an increase of 290 students. MSU also reported a record 906 students attending classes at Gallatin College MSU, which offers programs in career technical education and vocational training. The college's enrollment was up 21%. For a closer look at those numbers, you can head over and check out our website. Now, we're going to take a short break here on Montana this morning, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about student loan forgiveness, not the political aspect, but how scammers are taking advantage of the opportunity of eyes online looking for a deal. I'm John Matteries. As college students and recent grads wait for any information about loan forgiveness, scammers are now targeting them with all sorts of fake offers. What you need to watch for coming up. 